Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's too small. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Alrighty, people, good afternoon. We are live just after five. Thank you for joining me. Shout out to, oh, shout out to Aaron, J Paps, uh, Reform Too Many Coiner, Connor G, and Raven Shield in the house already. Like whippets. That's what we like. Eager beavers ready to learn so we can spread the news to all these newbies that are going to be flooding into Bitcoin. Can you imagine how crazy it's going to be? Like literally the most valuable commodity on earth and there's literally only a few of us to know about it. Can you honestly imagine what it's going to be like? We all need to pull our finger out. We all need to be there to help and guide to make sure that the genuine newbies who are coming in, you know, do not get misled, ripped off, scammed by all these shit coiners with shit for brains you know, intentional scammers, just, you know, people, honestly, there's going to be so many questions. Um, so yeah, education is key. The more you know, the more you grow. That's uh, one of my favorite expressions. So um, I saw this earlier. I don't know if this isn't necessarily um, a Bitcoin related, but ZDNet reported on saying um, high level organizer of Fin7 uh, hacking group sentenced to 10 years in prison. Now, I was looking at prison sentences earlier because I was thinking about like counterfeiting and all that. Um, counterfeiting uh, currency uh, is um, carries a 10 year sentence, which is almost like, well, yeah, almost like up to like half a life sentence. Because obviously, you know, um, trust in money, which is the financial system, um, underpins everything. It can be devastating. And so the punishment for doing it is so high in order to put criminals off doing it. Because otherwise everybody would just simply be uh, attempting it. So uh, let's see what this one is about then. High level organized, organized with Fin7 hacking groups. And this is 10 years. That is harsh. Ukrainian man pleaded guilty conspiracy to commit wire fraud. And one count of conspiracy to commit computer hacking. So he's pleaded guilty and they've still given him 10 years. Um, a high level manager of Fin7 hacking group has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. The USD, the USD you don't want to get involved with DOJ, uh-uh. The US Department of Justice described Ukrainian national Fedira Halajur, 35, as a systems administrator for Fin7 Hacking Group. He was arrested in Germany in 2018 at the request of US law enforcement and was extradited, extradited to Seattle. 
In September 2019, he pleaded guilty con to conspiracy to commit wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit computer hacking. Hallader said uh, FinCEN's, FinCEN's um, uh, systems administrator and pl um, ad systems administrator and played a central role in uh, aggregating stolen payment card information, supervising FinCEN's hackers and maintaining the elaborate network of servers that the group used to hack and control victim com victims' computers. According to the Department of Justice, he also controlled the organization's encrypted channels of communication, it said. Um, so they said uh, Halladra was sentenced to 10 years in prison by a U.S. District Court in Seattle following an investigation by the Seattle Cyber Task Force of the uh, FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Washington with assistance from the uh, U.S. Department of Justice and international agencies. This criminal organization had more than 70 people organized into, into uh, business units and teams. Some were hackers, others were the developers. The uh, malware installed on computers and still others crafted the malicious emails that duped victims into um, infecting their company systems, said uh, acting U.S. Attorney Tessa A. Gorman. Uh, this defendant worked at the uh, intersection of all these activities and thus bears heavy responsibility for billions in damage caused to companies and individual consumers. Since the uh, since at least 2015, Fin7, so I guess that's a piss take of FinCEN, <laughs> Which is the financial action? Uh, well, hold on. What do you got? FinCEN. Um, FinCEN. Is that how you? Um, yeah, FinCEN. There we go. Um, so that's the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. So Fin Seven, I'm guessing, is a piss take of that. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, since at least 2015, Fin Seven, also referred to as a Car Bananka Group and the um, Navigator Group, has engaged in a highly sophisticated malware campaign to hack hundreds of US companies, predominantly in the um, restaurant and game, restaurant gaming and hospitality industries, the Department of Justice said. Fin7 hacked into thousands of computer systems and stole millions of computer credit and debit card numbers, which were used or sold for profit. Again, this is why we need Bitcoin. Everything needs to be on the Bitcoin network. So that, you know, it's so that we don't get malware or hacks like this. You know, I mean, I suppose you're still going to get hackers trying to steal, uh, you know, your um, 12 word secret key and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you'd be a fool to to hand that over. I mean, that, that's all they need, really. But uh, but that they can't do anything else. That's it with Bitcoin. It's just simply your your 12 word passphrase because you cannot set up malware or anything like that um, on uh, on the blockchain. You know, um, so just store everything on there. In the United States alone, Fin7 has stolen more than 20 million uh, customer card records uh, from over 6,500 individual point of sale terminals and more than 3,600 separate business locations after successfully compromising each target with malware. Fin7 stole millions of bank card details from um, uh, compromised POS. What would that be? It's not proof of stake. Um, oh, POS, I'm trying to think. Point of sale. There we go. Poof, I have to pull that one out of the bag. So from compromised points of sale systems uh, that were used directly or sold on underground dark web forums for profit. The cyber criminal operation has been uh, actively hacking businesses in the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, France and other countries since 2015. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, again, this just simply... Well, one, they caught Ross Albright, who was the administrator of the Silk Road. You know, even that was through old detective work. But they, they still did it. You know, they will get you if you if you break the law. You know, and especially if you are a help contributing, um, you know, money laundering... Uh, and all this kind of stuff. It's honestly what Roger Ver is uh, saying about how uh, you know, oh, if it's you know, it's above the law and all that, you know, and they can't shut it down. Absolute crap! Absolute crap! It needs to work within the law and hold all those criminals to account, including government. If it held governments to account, you wouldn't have an issue with a democratically elected government. One, you would know that it was the democratically elected government because all the voting would be on chain. You know, so there's uh, none of this, um, you know, finding pallets full of ballots at 3 a.m. 
um, you know, and uh, and voting uh, the company that creates the voting machines, you know, in some <laughs> far off, you know, in Venezuela, you know, uh, that can easily be compromised. You, know, you wouldn't there wouldn't be any of that. You would have a democrat, truly democratically elected government, you know, uh, and and money on the blockchain that you can trust. It's data that can be trusted. It's all about data security. You know, so, I mean, this really is just another really good example of how uh, Roger Ver is talking absolute bollocks. You know, this is a hacker group. You know, this is a group that knows their stuff and they still got caught and taken down. You know, if you're not willing to do the time, don't commit the crime. You know, there are easy, I mean, especially, I mean, now, I mean, we, certainly now that we know how valuable Bitcoin's going to be, just buy, honestly, buy Bitcoin. Do not break the law. Just buy, just buy and use Bitcoin. That's it. You know, take power out, take power away from these uh, central bankers who are probably like some of the biggest criminals, um, you know, that ever walked the planet. Uh, to be honest with you, so um, yeah, lessons should be learned there. To be honest with you, um, let's see what uh, let's see what else I had here. Uh, yeah, look at yeah. I mean, I, I reported on this earlier this morning. Uh, this was a uh, tether printing another um, another two billion dollars. I mean, what a joke! Look at that. You can see it all. They yeah, amount two billion USDT. Timestamp one minute forty two seconds ago on uh, April the nineteenth, which is just simply yesterday at uh, half past nine, <clears throat> uh, Universal Central Time. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's so brazen. I just don't. I literally, like, there is stupid and there is next level stupid, which is what this is. Uh, let's have a quick look at the knife here. So he said, I will be submitting the names of six individuals who are actively engaged in uh, illegal price fixing of BSV to SEC law enforcement on Monday. Um, that was. Is that. Was that yesterday? Or is that next Monday or something like that? Uh, oh, so that was um, 3 a.m. in the morning. He was probably still up, so it would have been. Uh, he was probably referring to Sunday that he, that he was still awake in. Uh, so that would have that would have been yesterday. Um, yeah, check it out. Yeah, exciting, uh, exciting stuff to come, people. So let's uh, let's have a let's have a check up on the gossip. See what is going down. Here we go. Uh, let's have a look at the um, business first of all. all right, so Vemno users can now buy crypto. Again, cryptocurrency, the concept of cryptocurrency is an absolute scam. So who gives a monkeys? Uh, Nigeria SEC working uh, with central banks to lift digital currency ban. Uh, FloatSV launches loyalty reward token. Uh, trading platform, not really all that bothered about that. I said, uh, Vionex's Robin Coe's talks challenges of building on the Bitcoin with Bitstocks podcast. Oh, uh, okay. So that's uh, Robin of um, the uh, Metanet Society at Cambridge University. Uh, not really bother about Turkey's one. Privacy, uh, loss of information factor for uh, digital euro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, uh, let's, let's have a quick look at this one then. So uh, challenges of building on Bitcoin. Let's see. Um, let's see what this Cambridge University student says. So, uh, Vionex's Robin uh, Coes talks challenges of building on Bitcoin on uh, Bitstocks podcast. Vionex founder and CEO Robin Coes recently uh, guested on Bitstocks podcast episode forty-one to talk about the challenges of building on Bitcoin. Uh, this should be quite interesting because. Uh, I mean, the challenges of building on Bitcoin is just the fact that you're actually building on a ledger. So you're literally like building on an accounting ledger. Uh, so you have to take that into account. It's not just simply sort of building on a, you know, a, a server uh, that doesn't do anything. Uh, so Bitstock CEO Michael Hudson and uh, Coes began the conversation by, taught, by taking a look at the Cambridge University's Metanet Society president's background and how he got into Bitcoin. Throughout the conversation, it becomes clear that Coe's has very strong understanding of machine learning and game theory through his previous experiences uh, and the work he's done in both areas. Has a great and unique insight into why a Bitcoin SV struggles when it comes to user adoption. Really? Pretty easy for me, uh, I found. Uh, Hudson asked Coe's, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, you've, said that uh, you've said that a couple of times. Wasted the big opportunity in the last two years. What is that? What is the big opportunity that we missed? 
To which Coz replied, what we did, we played the uh, antagonistic game. We very clearly said we don't want anything to do with anyone else in this space because we are regulatory compliant and you are not and you'll go down for it. Uh, then we said, oh, uh, we can't do it because we have strong cards uh, at play. So we risk being delisted from Kraken and Binance because we were so sure we would win. Because when you are antagonistic and you win, then it's a, a bigger win in the end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we made that bet based on thinking that, that Craig Wright's lawsuit would end a bit earlier as if there was a no coronavirus. That is probably the biggest loss for us as a community that uh, coronavirus happened. <sighs> oh, I don't know if I agree with that, to be honest with you. I mean, lower prices just mean we get to accumulate more for longer. That's the way I look at it. Uh, when you look at the statistics, the startup creation uh, rate dropped about 70%. Uh, and we as a space said... Because we were so sure of ourselves, we said we didn't want. Uh, said we don't want to have any investors. We want to have builders. And when the startup rate declines by seventy percent, suddenly you don't have builders anymore. And that's how we got kind of stagnant in the narrative. Um, uh, particularly, uh, partially because Corona came and people felt insecure and they wanted to have something to invest in that might at least not end in hyperinflation. If that ever happens or not, it doesn't matter. It's mostly the perception that people had at the time. Uh, well, the thing is, I mean, we know that there's massive building going on in the background, like massive, as in institutional building in the background that we don't know about, but you can see it. You can see it in the figures. You can see it in the block size. You can see it in the amount of data flowing through chain, even though like 90% 90, 90 of it is unrecognized. You know, unrecognized doesn't mean no one knows what it is. <laughs> you know, people know. Craig will know exactly what it is. A lot of people at Enchain will probably know exactly what it is. You know, and, and Bitcoin is all about corporations, you know. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, again, you know, it's like 4D chess and all that. Um, you know, I mean, user apps like, you know, Twitch and that are all really good fun. Uh, TDXP is great for those, uh, you know, degenerate gamblers. And then we've got uh, Relica, which is pretty cool, you know. Um, but it's, 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 um, it's, it's multinationals and corporates first. Uh, and they're the ones who I think are building that we don't know about because they don't want us to know about them. But when they, uh, when they do reveal themselves, it's going to be massive. And like I said, you know, I mean, look at D Drive. Um, and, and again, like I said, you know, just look at the, uh, look at the block size, you know, look at, look at the block size and look at the volume of transactions. You know, we've got nearly sort of like between sort of like 70 and 80% of the, uh, of the data flowing through the chain. And we've got the equivalent number of uh, transactions, you know, and massively low fees. Um, so I don't know if I agree with all of, you know, maybe on a superficial level, uh, socially it might be like this, but. Personally, like I said, I think there's big corporations uh, already um, moving in the background. Uh, the whole antagonistic play did not work out well, and now we need to find a way to recover from that by uh, going a new route and way. I don't think throwing money at startups will make any change because the users are not leaving because the apps are not amazing. They just aren't there because we didn't channel enough users into the ecosystem in the first place to get this um, amplifying process. Um, the Ethereum had, uh, had over the years... Yeah, but Ethereum is absolute crap. Is absolute crap. Like, all it's schoolboys pissing around, you know, on on Ethereum. Um, you know, Bitcoin is data. Bitcoin is about data security, efficiencies of storing data, and data sovereignty. You know, it's massive. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, if you want to compare yourself to Ethereum, but I don't really see the point. Um, you know, you you. You're comparing the schoolboys with with big corporates. Um, I just don't really see the point in that, really. Uh, Coz and Hudson also talked about machine learning, the metanet tokens and NFTs, token protocols, layer two solutions, and more. Coz also turned the tables at the end of the interview and uh, begins asking Hudson a few questions, and the two went on to have a really insightful conversation about the current state of BSV network and where it may be heading in the future. To find out what the two talked about, uh, you're going to have to watch the episode 41 of Bitstocks podcast. All right. Yeah, I might, uh, I might watch that. Yeah, why not? 
just for uh, just for giggles, if anything, might learn something from it. Let's see, let's see what else we've got here. All right, right, blockchain buys Texas data center. Yeah, seen that one already. On chain voting launches on Gorilla Dow. Oh, cool. Ebank team under fire as corruption allegations grow. Mm. Yeah, I'm just um, yeah. I want more input. I'm like uh, I'm like um, Johnny Five from um, Short Circuit. <laughs> just need need input. Need input. But I need fundamental input. That's what I need. Uh, third section timestamp server key takeaways. Yeah, yeah, good. Theory of Bitcoin, Bitcoin white paper. Second section uh, transaction key uh, transactions key takeaways. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. They're all technical ones. Uh, let's have a quick look at uh, the biggest the biggest shit show reporter in the space, which is Coin Telegraph. I mean, some of their articles are actually quite funny. Again, reporting on. Um, uh, PayPal owned Vemo launches cryptocurrency trading. Oh, surprise, surprise! Just more shit to the show. Uh, project to um, project to provide easy to use multi-chain wallet and Ethereum to Polkadot Bridge. Who gives a shit? God, these shit coiners are just so misled. Honestly, it's shocking. Uh, Bado and US dollar and Bitcoin are both slumping in a rare trend. Who cares? Uh, again, they'll be talking about Core Coin. Uh, EFT POS reveals plans to power Australian smart cities with blockchain tech. Let's see what's going on here then. Uh, we work at Subscriptor. Yeah, not really interested in that one. Um, let's see what this one is. Here we go. Uh, again, I mean, you know, they're, they're wasting their time so badly if they're not building on Bitcoin, honestly. So EFT POS reveals plans to power Australian smart cities with blockchain tech. Um... Again, this is what GeoSpock are doing, really. So uh, FPOS revealed its plans to use distributed ledger technology to power smart cities and self-driving vehicles during the Australian Blockchain Week conference. All right. Again, I mean, imagine the amount of shit, like, as in like shit knowledge, misguided knowledge that was passed around there. Literally everything is going to be on Bitcoin. Everything. Uh, Australia's leading proof-of-sale technology provider, FPOS Australia, has revealed ambitious plans to uh, roll out blockchain-powered autonomous vehicles and smart cities in Australia um, are built using Hedra Hashgraph. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's such a waste. It's a completely centralized system. You know, and the tokens on it are securities because it's a centralized system. It's insane. It's insane. Oh my, how can they not see this? Like, honestly. Speaking on Tuesday as part of the Australian Blockchain Week, Robert Allen, Deputy Chair of Blockchain Australia and FPOS Entrepreneur in Residence, discussed the firm's intentions to use distributed ledger technology for advanced infrastructure, among other applications. Well, I mean, at least they're looking for new solutions anyway. You know, so it means eventually they will find Bitcoin. Um, but when they do, it's going to be heartbreaking for them, you know. So a uh, quote here, we're, uh, we're going to be looking at smart cities. We're going to be looking at autonomous vehicles and things that we haven't even thought about yet. All of this needs new infrastructure and FPOS needs, um, needs to be informed by that. Again, they're completely misguided. It's all Bitcoin. It's all in the white paper. If they just read the white paper, it's all there, you know? Uh, FPOS Chief Investment Officer Ben Tabell noted the significance of the firm's distributed ledger technology initiatives in partnership with Hedra, highlighting the firm's efforts to combine digital uh, identity and payment solutions in Australia. Massive fail. This is a big part of our work and effort at the moment to bring in digital identity and transactions so that we can securely support payments and other transaction clubs in Australia's digital ecosystem, he said. FPOS Australia first announced a proof of concept for an Australian stablecoin using Hedger Hashgraph in July 2020. What a fail. Uh, while the pilot focused on micropayments, just look at Bitcoin. <laughs> just look at Bitcoin. Such as real-time payments for um, streaming and pay-per-click uh, content. Alan noted that the uh, trial laid the groundwork for more ambitious initiatives. It can only happen on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only one with any fundamental value, which means it's the only one that can fundamentally economically sustain a network like this. You know, it's crazy. Um, otherwise, you just simply end up with uh, like an, another like internet, which is um, you know built on uh, one one individual um, private key. It's not a competitive. Hedra Hashgraph is not a competitive system. You know, uh, crazy. 
Uh, Hedra is the only next generation network that will support those kinds of use cases. <laughs> How blinded have you got to be? Uh, so we wanted to test it and it has uh, operated beautifully and now because we've got all this new digital strategy we are in a position where we can start looking at the ways that problems can solve um, uh, can be solved in a way which is uh, which is maybe non-traditional and more distributed again they all they're doing is going on about distributed what about decentralized and distributed you know they so basically by saying distributed they're acknowledging that Hydra Hashgraph is a centralized system because there is no competition between you know the distributors you know that's it uh in january fpos became hedra's 17th governing council member and australia's first hedra node operator oh god uh, hedra has been expanding its uh, governing council recently with shinha bank joining earlier this month french utility giant um electricity electricity to France onboarding in March and Standard Bank Group becoming the network's first African node operator in February. I mean, this is like no different from uh, XRP. You know, just onboarding clients. I'll just, just simply use the XRP ledger. It's completely centralized. It's absolutely worthless. Totally worthless. I just, I, I just can't believe how far ahead we are. And I just, like I said, new level of uh, stupidity that I'm just not used to uh, dealing with, really. Or even witnessing, you know, how can you not see this? You know, it's it's crazy. Um, let's see what else there is. Crypto, crypto, crypto claim is banned in Turkey. Uh, oh, we they here's why one analyst says uh, it's not altcoin season. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, price analysis, pff, boring. Um, Bitcoin traders are eyeing these prices as, B, uh, as BTC. Who cares? Who cares? Honestly, God. Yeah, I mean, that's why they call it a shit show. You know, I do find it funny. Though. Peak fears. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, but I mean, they, they would be uh, shitting themselves because there is no value in it. So it's all guesswork. Uh, the perils of suing crypto exchanges after ransomware attacks. Uh, hmm. Could be interesting. What's this one then? So this, the perils of suing crypto exchanges after ransomware attacks. As seen in the case of uh, AAV, is that, uh, is that Aave? Um, Bitfinex targeting a crypto exchange over stolen funds is a high risk, low reward proposition. Mm -hmm. In October 2019, unknown hackers infiltrated a Canadian insurance company by installing the malware BitPayma, which encrypted the firm's data and IT systems. The hackers demanded a ransom of $1.2 million to be paid in CoreCoin. Uh, you know, I might actually start changing the name of CoreCoin because I was thinking, you know, it follows the SegWit protocol, you know, to segregate its signatures. So, uh, you yeah, know, rather than calling it SegWit, um, I just call it might, I might call it Dimwit Coin. <laughs> Following uh, to be paid in Dimwit. <laughs> In return for the uh, decry um, uh, decryption software needed for the firm to regain access to its systems, the firm's United Kingdom-based insurer, known only as AA, arranged to pay the uh, the Dimwit ransom, <laughs> Dimwit coin ransom, and the firm's systems were back up and running within a few days. Meanwhile, AA started the process of seeking legal uh, avenues to recover the Dimwit coin obtained by the hackers. It engaged the uh, blockchain investigations firm Chain Analysis, whose investigators revealed that 96 of the 109.25 uh, uh, Dimwit coin paid had been transferred to a wallet linked to the Bitfinex exchange. Oof. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. So far, this story is unfortunately far from, um, far from unusual. Uh, Dimwit accounts for the uh, vast majority of ransomware payments uh, due to its anonymity accessibility. Oh dear, again, it's not, anon not anonymous, is it? Uh, making it easier for victims to pay ransoms and verifiably, uh, very, uh, verifiably of uh, transactions, allowing criminals to confirm once payments has been made. Uh, what is unusual about this story, however, is that it sparked a 14-month-long legal battle between AA and Bitfinex. Uh, one that only recently concluded after AA discontinued its claim against Bitfinex in the uh, in the UK High Court. Oh, wonder why they um, wonder why they did that. 
Uh, having traced the stolen uh, Dimwit coin to Bitfinex's platform, and with the identity of the hackers still unknown, AA started its litigation against Bitfinex in December 2019. Again, this is not unusual. UK courts have a wide range of remedies at their disposal to assist victims of fraud in trying to recover their assets. In instances where banks, exchanges or other intermediaries may find themselves unknowingly receiving or holding misappropriated or stolen assets, victims of fraud have been able to rely on. Uh, Norwich Farm... Pharmacal... Is that right? Uh, Norwich Pharmacal Orders which require a, uh, a third party to disclose certain information to the applicant uh, that will assist in recovery efforts. In this context, the information would be the identity of the wallet holder to which the BTC was traced and all details of any other transactions involving the, uh, the Dimwit coin since receipt by the wallet linked with the exchange. Uh, freezing orders that prevent defendant fraudsters from uh, dealing with any of their assets until further notice. An exchange notified of a freezing order relating to a client must take steps to freeze the account to prevent the client from withdrawing and dissipating assets. Where it can be established that a third party holds property that belongs to the uh, fraud claimant, uh, propriety injunctions can be obtained to prevent the third party from dealing with that particular property. Linked orders are often made to require the subject of a uh, proprietary injunction to disclose information of the uh, Norwich pharmacal kind uh, explained above. Cryptocurrency as property in the UK. Oh, let's see, what, let's see what this says. The UK courts are very familiar with the preceding remedies when involving bank accounts and fiat currency. More recently, the courts have been grappling with how these principles apply to cryptocurrency. However, it is clear that the courts are willing to flexibly apply legal principles to ensure that these remedies are available to victims trying to recover stolen crypto assets. In the AA case, Justice Simon Bryan determined for the first time that Bitcoin could be classified as a property under British law, meaning that he could grant a uh, proprietary injunction in relation to that property. This seems obvious, but traditionally the law has, um, has seen property as something that could either be uh, possessed in a tangible sense or be enforced by a right to sue. Cryptocurrencies obviously, uh, cryptocurrency obviously does not meet either requirement, but the courts have taken a pragmatic approach to ensure that novel intangible assets like cryptocurrency are considered property. This flexible approach meant that AA was able to obtain injunctive relief. Bitfinex duly froze the account and provided AA with information about the identity of the consumer who owned the wallet with the stolen, uh, stolen Dimwit coin. <laughs> As it turned out though, the uh, Dimwit coin had been transferred again before Bitfinex was contacted by AA's lawyers and could not be and could not be returned. AA reached a confidential settlement with Bitfinex, uh, Bitfinex's um, customer, also a defendant to AA's claim, uh, and then turned its sights on Bitfinex in an attempt to receive additional compensation. The uh, insurer raised a number of legal claims against Bitfinex, including the assertion that the exchange received the Dimwit coin or its traceable proceeds when it was um, property belonging to AA. As such, AA declared that a legal trust should be imposed, holding Bitfinex accountable to AA for the uh, Dimwit coin. It was also argued that Bitfinex was reckless with regards to whether uh, Dimwit coin was fully transferable into the relevant wallets. Uh, these are difficult arguments to prove, and after Bitfinex sent out its detailed legal defense in response to AA's claim, AA ultimately decided to abandon its claims against Bitfinex. But this was not quite the end of the story. Usually when a claimant abandons its case... Um, sorry about that, I was just waving for somebody uh, through the window then. Um, but this is not quite the end of the story. Usually when a claimant abandons its case, the default uh, position is that it must pay all of the defendant's costs. However, AA argued that its cost liability should be reduced by 50% based upon Bitfinex's supposedly unreasonable conduct. The parties fought this out at a high court hearing in January, culminating in the court deciding there was no unreasonable contact that would justify any reduction. AA was therefore ordered to pay 100% of Bitfinex's legal costs, including the cost of its own unsuccessful application to have those costs reduced. Conclusion uh, it is understandable that victims of fraud who may not be able to successfully pursue the actual fraudster might be tempted to take on a cryptocurrency exchange with deep pockets, perhaps in the simple, um, in the simple hope that they can uh, engineer a modest settlement and avoid the time and cost of complex legal proceedings. 
Cyber insurers like AA might calculate that the cost benefit associated with these steps could be justified. However, these exchanges like Bitfinex will continue to defend themselves robustly, particularly when the legal merits of claims are extremely challenging and ultimately represents an attempt to drag an innocent exchange into the uh, fallout of a cyber crime. It is neither knowledge uh, of nor involvement in. Mm. I think that's a bit biased reporting, if I'm honest. Um, you know, dragging, dragging an innocent exchange. Well, by law, they're not... Well, you know, I'm obviously innocent until proven guilty, but, you know, uh, handling stolen funds, you know, and, you know, a duty of care, as you would at any financial institution. So, um, yeah, that sounded rather biased, to be honest with you. I think whoever wrote that is just like, yeah, you know, Bitcoin is beyond the law and, and these exchanges are decentralized, therefore, the you know, they shouldn't be held responsible for anything that they do. It's all due to the customers. No. You know, they are providing the platform. Therefore, they have a duty of care, you know, to, to do uh, AML and KYC and all that kind of stuff. So interesting, interesting report, that one. Hmm. All right, cool. Well, I'm glad, we're glad we've done that today. Uh, shout out to people in the chat box while we are doing dinging of the dong. Please put your handles and pay mails in the, uh, in the chat box. So just starting from the top. Ah, oh, quite a few people in there today. Good stuff. Good chat in there. Uh, Aaron Goodfield, J Paps, Reform Too Many Coiner, Connie G, Raven Seal, G Australia, Richie Rich, Sav Toshi. Great stuff. So, anyway, oh, Arcade Rob as well. Neasy in there. I can see uh, Smoke Pipe. Uh, Keith Fellows, Matty Ray, Purple Warrior, Amanda. Good to see you all. All right, stuff. So remember, you know, ding each other's dongs as well. Have some fun while we're doing this. Let me just open up my hand cache and we will be underway. Here we go. Opening this. Got it, right. Um, starting from the first. Oh, Wi Fi in there as well. Excellent stuff. Uh, so we'll do all the ones that have. Starting from the top. So Wi Fi is in there first. Here we go. That's Wi-Fi, excellent stuff on in my contacts list on the way to you. There we go, caught that volume nicely. Um, Zelda Disk Dark. <laughs> I wonder if that'll come up when I put Zelda. Yep, there we go, got it, excellent. Swiping to send on the way. There we go, Purple Warrior, that'll have to go in my contacts there. Here we go. Um, purple Warrior. Oh, there we go, adding that one. Excellent. So, comes up, yep, excellent, there we go, nice one. Swiping to send, on the way. <coughs> Keith Fellows, that's uh, Big Blocks, here we go. Uh, B I G B, yep, got it. Swiping to send, on the way. <coughs> uh, Matty Ray, can't remember what your one is. Remember, it's not about, it's not about, you, Ding in a dong is like a welcome, you know, it's uh, it's like shaking hands with somebody, reaching out. A dong isn't going to make a difference to anybody. It's just making sure that you're not a troll and you do actually have a wallet. Because if you're not using uh, if you're not using Bitcoin, then it means you're a hodler and you're a shitcoiner and I'll block you. <laughs> uh, here we go, right, Aaron, you're next. Here we go. Hey, yep, got it, Aaron G. Swiping to send, there we go. Uh, Maddie from Australia, you're next. Here we go. M A double D Y. There we go. Need that one. I think I might need that one in my contacts actually. Here we go. I'll just um, do that now actually. See if I can see if it's in there. M A double D Y. There we go. Oh, now it's added. Excellent. And uh, uh, Arcade Rob, Pikes, I wonder if that's in there. P I K E S. Right, I need that in my contacts as well. Uh, P I K E S. Add. Got it. There we go. On the way to Arcade Rob, thank you very much. There we go. Uh, any, anyone else in there? Anyone else in there? 
Uh, JPAPS, see your name at the top. Here we go, JP. JPAPS, got it. Swiping to send on the way. Reform too many coin of us, use it or lose it. I'm sure that's in my contacts as well. Yeah, yep, yeah, got it, use it or lose it. Swiping to send on the way. And uh, Connor G as well, in the house, good to see ya. See you in, that's Connor G, yep. Swiping to send, I think that's everybody. Oh, Neasy, obviously. There we go, oh, Richie Rich as well. Um, and double E, there we go, got it. Swiping to send, zooming through these today, loving that. And uh, Richie Rich, here we go, sending, R-I-C-H. Next, swiping to send on the way. And a Sav Toshi, oh great stuff. Here we go, Suav Toshi, that's the one. Swiping to send on the way. I think that's, uh, I think that's everybody. Um, what I can think of, yeah, nice one, there we go. All right, nice one. There you go. Cheers, we go. Uh, yeah, cheers, guys. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that. And as ever, be aware. Take care. Stay safe out there. Same again tomorrow. Catch you guys later. Get paid for posting your pics on Relica. Download the app now at www.getrelica.com. Get your tweet etched on Twitch forever on the Bitcoin blockchain. Do it today at www.jointwitch.com. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Support independent content creators on micropayment platforms such as Streamanity, Twitch, and Relica. We should profit from our data, not the large corporations who track, monitor, and sell it. If you enjoy the Bitcoin content that I produce, please support me by heading over to www.satoshi.tv where you can keep up to date with all the latest news, gossip and content as it's created. Thanks very much. To get started in Bitcoin, go to freebsv.com where you can claim your free Bitcoin. Then head over to Twitter and follow at IamZatoshi where you can take part in his very generous and world famous free giveaways. The future of advertising meets the power of Bitcoin at Tonic Pow. Get paid for posting advertising campaigns to your social media profiles. Go to www.tonicpowerads.com.